Okay, hello, I'm Chris. I'm Dev Manager at Amazon. Uh, and I'm Jeff, I'm Principal Engineer on Amazon GameLift. And we're going to talk to you today about how to deploy some dedicated game servers with our uh, service, Amazon GameLift. So a question that Jeff and I get asked pretty frequently is like, hey, what is Amazon doing in the gaming space? And the answer is quite a bit. We call it Amazon Game Tech. There's a whole bunch of things in here depending on where you are in your game development life cycle. So things like content creation tools like Lumberyard or there's a whole platform to engage players and streamers called Twitch. The service that we're talking about today, GameLift, falls under the AWS bucket. It's kind of the orange game services and tools thing on the screen there. So before we get too far into the meat and potatoes of our talk, I want to invite you to join me on a spiritual journey. Spiritual journey. A spiritual journey, a, a spirit yeah, like train. A spirit train. Yeah. Uh, so imagine for a moment you're building a multiplayer game, Chelsea, and uh, you're, um, you know, you're going to launch this game maybe two or three months out, and your specialty on this game is kind of the networking server piece. And you're in a meeting, and you're all kind of giving your status update, and uh, maybe one of the producers turns to you and says, uh, hey, Chelsea, why don't you go ahead and figure out how many servers we need and, like, um, what kind, and you order them, and we can kind of get them all hooked up and, and go, go from there. And you hear this, and um, some questions kind of probably pop into your mind, like, ah, yeah, how many, uh, how many servers do we need? And what if we don't order enough? How are we going to get more quickly? And uh, do we need servers with lots of computer power or memory or both or all of that? How are we going to figure all this out? And how are we going to get all the players that are coming in kind of distributed in all the open slots on our launch day? How are we going to get logs and metrics? So all of this is kind of swirling around in your head and you realize what you actually need is a time machine because there's no way you're going to be able to get this thing launched in a couple months. So the point I'm trying to make is this point, that setting up and scaling dedicated servers is actually kind of tricky. There's a lot of things that are kind of below the surface that don't immediately come to mind. And a lot of these things you're trying to solve when there's a lot of other competing priorities right at the end of the game. You're trying to get your frame rate fixed. There's maybe weird fiddly bugs. You're trying to go through certification. Someone, you know, all this stuff's going on. And then someone kicks the door open and says, what about the servers? So this is kind of where GameLift steps in. GameLift lets you do this thing really easily. It lets you deploy and scale multiplayer games in minutes. So if you're building a multiplayer game and you're not using the cloud, you're not using GameLift, you're probably doing this stuff right now. You're finding and hiring a team of experts. You're putting them in the corner of a room for a long time. They're going to build a prototype. They're going to stress test it. They're going to rebuild it. They're going to fix, find and fix really nasty scaling issues. Launch day is going to kind of get closer. They're going to realize you need a UI so you can control this thing. Uh, then launch happens, hopefully it goes smoothly, and then everything flips over to sort of 24-7 support. So GameLift takes you from this place to here. With just a couple of steps, you can get your game up and running. So you create an account, you upload your build, you scale up, and you start putting players into games. So we're going to get into some more of the mechanics of GameLift. We're going to run through just two kind of nomenclature things. The first is a build. A build is really just your server binaries. It's all the config and all the libraries and other stuff that your server needs to run. And you deploy a build into a fleet. A fleet is like a living, breathing thing that has game servers. Uh, it scales up and down. Players connect to these. And when you put them together, it kind of looks like this. So you're the developer on the left. You upload your build to GameLift. GameLift deploys that uh, build onto EC2 instances. And the fleet is kind of that container that kind of scales up and down. Players in the future show up, and then they get routed to sort of open game slots on your game servers. Jeff and I are going to run through four developer scenarios. We're going to show you how to get up and running on a simple dev environment, how to take something small and scale it up to launch day size, how to perform updates to your game without impacting your players, and finally, some cool tips that you can use to save some money. So to get started with a simple dev environment, there's three things you need in advance, uh, aside from a multiplayer game. One, you need an AWS account. The second thing is you need a multiplayer game. And the last is you need your client and server to be talking to one another and remain stable. Like, that's kind of a, like, having it work locally is probably a good first step. So to set up a dev environment, again, you're going to upload your build. You're going to create a fleet. 
you're going to configure your game plan to connect to the fleet, and then you just start putting players in. So I'm going to toss it over to Jeff, who's going to walk us through what that looks like. Sure. And what I'm going to do today is actually just walk through the Lumberyard multiplayer game tutorial. So Lumberyard uh, is free to download. You can give it a try. It comes with a multiplayer tutorial that shows how to integrate directly with GameLift. So I'm just going to walk through those steps. If you like what you see, you can try this out tonight on your own. Uh, the difference is I've already compiled the game, so you don't have to sit here and watch uh, some scrolling text. Uh, I've already pre-typed out some commands just to yeah, skip the potential of typos in the live demo. So the first thing that you do is you upload a build. So I'm in the, I'm in the directory here. Almost had a typo. I'm almost in the directory where I built my dedicated server and packaged all of the assets. Then this makes up the Lumberyard sample game. And so you interact with GameLift from the command line using the AWS command line tool. And the command simply upload build. We give it a build version. Uh, and we just say the, oh, sorry, guys. Thank, Thank you, Chelsea. We're so going to figure out how to switch the screen here. Yeah. Is that so better? Now you guys can see it, right? Thank you. Uh, and so it's just a command line, say, AWS game left upload build. We give it a name, a build version. It's uploading. Uh, the internet connection here is a little bit slower than we're used to, so we're not going to sit here and make you uh, wait for the build to actually upload. Uh, we'll just jump over to the console, and we'll see what the builds look like here. You can see uh, it's already initialized. That means it's going through the upload process. Um, but like a cooking show... Yeah, like we're not going to make you wait. Yeah. So, yeah, what Jeff is showing you here, this is the GameLift uh, console. So this is the UI experience that you would use to manage your fleet, configure different rules, see kind of what your game is doing. Um, it's super handy. So uh, we're going to choose a build that's already been uploaded, and we're going to create a fleet. So actually, at this point, we've already done step one. So Jeff's going to kind of go through this fleet creation wizard, gives his fleet a name. He chooses an instance type. So there's a bunch here, depending on do you need lots of compute, memory, or bandwidth, all of them. Uh, just filling out now the launch path. So this tells GameLift where in the build that he uploaded the executable is, so that GameLift can invoke it whenever new servers need to pop up. And he's going to pass in some parameters. These are just the command line args that will be passed to the server process. And then how many of them he wants to run on every EC2 instance, so one. Uh, down below, there's some other settings. Uh, a good one here to call out is the port settings. So this tells GameLift what inbound ports to open up so that the clients can connect. So in this case, our game server is expecting to listen on 33435 UDP, and we're opening up access to the entire internet. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Come on in. And then we're going to initialize the fleet. So fleets go through a provisioning process takes 15 minutes or so. Um, so we're not going to wait for that. We're going to flip over to a fleet that's already been created. We're going to pull the pie out of the oven. And so at this point, we're kind of like done step two. So the next step is to configure clients to start connecting to this fleet. So what does that look like? Yeah, so again, just following the Lumberyard demo, uh, I've compiled the clients. And I just created a little batch script to start it up. I'll show you what that looks like. So notepad space yard. Uh, and it just uh, executes the client, passes in the port to connect to. And the important thing is we pass in the identifier of the fleet that we want to connect to. And so that's the fleet we were just looking at in the console. So we'll go ahead and fire up the client here. Uh, and what you'll see when we go to the game of, when we go to the game of tab. <laughs> What you'll see. A mic. There we go. Yeah, a little mic issue. What you'll see when we go to the game lift tab here uh, is what we traditionally call the server browser model, right? So you're already at the point after uploading that you could have a server browser model. Uh, and you can see there's exactly one game that's running. There's zero players in it. There is one problem with this live demo where I'm going to come fix. Yeah. Yeah, so there's uh, Thank unfortunately. You. Uh, some ports blocked on this network that we weren't expecting, so the game isn't playable, but we'll go through the game lift steps. So you can see there's exactly one game server. We can try and join it. Um, the game won't actually play, but we'll go over back to the console. 
and we'll show uh, what happens here. And so what I'm showing you here is the Game Sessions tab. And this is a, a record of every single game that's active that's currently being played, as well as every game that's ever been played. For any game going on, you can jump in. You can see this blue reserved was us. Uh, when we tried to jump in via the Lumberyard sample, it created a reservation for us that we could go claim. This is a security mechanism to make sure only authorized people show up. What we can do is, um, for any game that's completed in the past to help with your debugging story, you can see uh, every player who was in the game, when they joined, when they left. For any game that completed, you know, sometimes you get that call from, or you know, forum posts or a call that, like, hey, something fishy happened with this game, can I go debug it? You can immediately jump to any game session that ever happened, just click download logs, uh, and it'll pop you a log of everything that your server emitted for exactly that game session and those players. So this is what we call the game sessions tab. And this is really great for kind of the kind of the live debugging, poking into what's going on in your game. But the problem once you start having thousands or tens of thousands of concurrent game sessions at once is poking into any individual one just isn't all that useful. And so uh, what we do is we create an aggregate view of everything going on in your game. We call this a metrics tab, and it's just time series data. And um, I'll go ahead and pick a more interesting fleet to demo this for you. Um, she will just go ahead and use this fleet. But what it does is it gives you a record of um, all the players who are currently connected into your game, the active game sessions. We can see just before we started, we created a few. We had some players join. Uh, and of course, uh, we have all the typical metrics you'd expect, like how many servers are, how many servers are pro uh, active, um, activations, termination, CPU utilization, just kind of all the metrics you'd expect to be able to manage your game, as well as the player-specific ones, like how many people are connected. Um, so, uh, Chris, we walked through uh, kind of configuring a game client, going through the game sessions, looking at the aggregate view of metrics to know what's going on in your game. Uh, how about we jump back to the slides and pick right back up where we were? Yeah, so the, the process we just walked through, uploading a build, creating a fleet, um, configuring game clients to connect, throughout your development process, you'll repeat that many, many, many times. Eventually, though, one very important day in your game's lifetime its life cycle will arrive, right? Launch day, super cool. So how do you take something that you've been developing with and then scale it up to launch day size so that thousands and thousands of players can connect? Well, on GameLift, it's just one step, one button click. You just scale up. What does that look like, Jeff? Yeah, I'll jump right back over to the console and what we call the scaling tab. Uh, and you'll see we already have it running across a few different instances. Uh, and all I'll do is say, you know, how many concurrent instances do I want to be able to run? Change it to 100, click OK. Uh, and that's it. That's, that's kind of done for scaling up. Yeah, so as GameLift acquires those instances and rolls them into the fleet, the capacity for that fleet to support more players just increases. OK, so in this narrative, launch day has come and gone. You had enough capacity. Everyone loves your game. Eventually, though, uh, you might want to make some changes, right? You probably have a backlog of bug fixes you want to make or some changes. Um, but the trick here is you don't really want to take your game down because your game is super popular. So how do you do this? How do you update your game without impacting the player experience? So on GameLift, we have a mechanism called an alias. And you can think of an alias as like a pointer to a fleet. It resolves to whatever fleet you pointed at. So you can use this to perform zero downtime updates on your game kind of looks like this. So suppose this is how you launched your game. You had build A, you had fleet A, and you have your alias that clients are flowing through onto fleet A. At some point in the future, you have build B. This is your bug fix build, and you create fleet B, and nobody's playing on it yet. And then when you're cool and comfortable, you flip the alias over, and then new games, new clients just flow through the alias onto fleet B. Now, the folks that were playing on fleet A, they're still there. They're still connected, they're having a good time, as those games end, your auto-scaling rules will automatically pull and drain those fleets down. So you can kind of use this mechanism to support two versions of your game at the same time. OK, so you got really good at uh, updating your game. Customers or players are super happy. Eventually, someone's going to be like, OK, how do we control costs? How are we going to um, pay as little as possible? Which is totally cool. 
So let's like just to look at a typical uh, demand curve for a game. If you have to order capacity for a game, you're going to end up in one of two places. One, you're going to be under capacity. You didn't order enough hardware. Uh, this is really bad because you spent money, but there's still sad players. And sad is like there's a whole bunch of other stuff here, right? Like bad forum posts, just super bad karma surrounding your game. Slightly better is being over capacity. So you ordered a ton of hardware. Uh, players are getting into games, everyone's really happy, but you're literally just burning money. So you don't want this either. So on GameLift, we have a mechanism called automatic scaling. So you can configure rules that tell GameLift when to scale up, when to acquire more instances, and when to scale down, when to release them. And when you use auto scaling, you end up with much better capacity tracking. The instances that your fleet has match exactly what the player demand is. What does this look like in the console? Yeah, we'll jump right back to the, the scaling tab. But the key thing to think about is actually uh, what is your goal for your auto scaling, right? Like, what is your capacity management goal? And so uh, for me and Chris, our sample game, what we want is for players to never have to wait. In order to do that, we're always going to have a little tiny buffer of unused capacity. And to configure that, you can see we just have a, a simple, you know, almost English-like rules language here. So we'll create a scale up policy. And we'll say if the percent of available game sessions you know, ever falls below 80% for uh, two minutes, then we'll scale the fleet up by 10% of its current size. I click OK. Uh, and that's uh, committed, right? And so already with just one uh, couple button clicks, what we'll do is while our scaling will just automatically follow our demand curve all the way up. Players will never wait. Um, but eventually, right, you, you hit your peak and the players start dropping off. So you need a second rule to, to save you money, get rid of those idle instances. Uh, and our scale down rule will be a little bit more conservative. We'll just type it out. We'll say, hey, the uh, percentage of available game sessions um, it's ever uh, greater than, uh, oh, and instead of 80, I should have said some like 20 there. If it's ever greater than 50% uh, for five minutes, then we will scale down uh, by 5%. Click OK. I'll update this one again. And, and now we have the updated rules, right? So we'll uh, scale up to match our player demand. Uh, nobody ever waits. And then we scale down. We get rid of the unused instances. Uh, and this is a pretty good spot. Uh, auto scaling will save you typically 50% off compared to a uh, uh, set and hold strategy. Yeah, you should totally use auto scaling. Another feature that we released very recently is what we call fleet IQ and spot instances. Uh, this allows GameLift to utilize sort of the excess capacity of AWS intelligently uh, in a way that you can save up to 90% off uh, our on-demand prices. So you should totally look at this, too, if you want to optimize cost. So I'm going to return back to the original point we made like 20 minutes ago, which is uh, scaling and managing dedicated game servers is pretty tricky. There's a lot of things that when you start to dig into it aren't necessarily intuitive. And if you get them wrong, it can be hugely impactful to your game. So these are the scenarios that GameLift helps you with. It lets you get up and running on a simple dev environment really quickly. You can take that simple dev environment and scale it up to launch day size in literally a button click. You can, you can uh, perform zero, down de zero downtime updates, so you can update your game without impacting your player experience. And there's a couple ways you can make some smart cost optimizations. All of these four things add up to the fifth thing, which is you get a bunch more time back that you can put into your game. The level design, the character design, things that make your game different than all the other games out there. Uh, next steps, check out our uh, booth. We're just around the corner here. Uh, try GameLift for free. There's 125 hours every month of free uh, GameLift usage. We have forums too, so ch uh, check us out there. If you liked our talk, didn't like it, Thought we would have mentioned something, but didn't. Um, give us a ping. And uh, I think that's it. Yeah, visit our kiosk. We're around the corner. Do you want to talk about the uh, Game of 201 session tomorrow? Oh, good point. Yeah, so there's another session that digs in. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was totally organic. Yeah. Wow, it seemed like we planned that. Yeah, so tomorrow, if you're interested, we dig into uh, matchmaking. So 
GameLift also provides a managed matchmaking experience we call FlexMatch. And I think that's tomorrow at 1.30. Yeah, and you'll, you'll be able to, and there's a guy presenting right Literally there. Literally Bruce Brown, yeah, he's off camera. Yeah, he's, so it'll be like a next level talk. Talk about how do you take a globally distributed player base, how do you group them effectively, and how do you put them in the lowest latency servers you can. Yep. Yep, so come check them out tomorrow. I'm Chris, he's Jeff. Thank you. Bye.